Now for our speaker this morning, it's really my pleasure. I'm kind of a poetry wrangler here at the society. I like to see where we can fit it in in different programs. So uh, bringing uh, Scott Pleasance to our lectern by way of Elaine von Diller's work on our program committee is a real pleasure. I've seen him perform at our open mics and at the TNET Public Library where I worked a long time ago. So I'm glad to know a little bit about him ahead of time. He comes to us across the river from the Bronx a while ago, is a transportation executive, an Air Force veteran, and a published poet, the key ingredient. And today he will speak about the topic Poetry Matters, share some of his original verse, and tell us about his role as the Poet Laureate of Teaneck Township. So please, Scott Pleasance, Thank join you. us. Thank you. And good morning, everybody. Good morning. Do we have any poetry enthusiasts in the house? Yeah. I go, a few. Uh -huh. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, and before I get started, I just want to let you know when I, um, when I go through my little uh, poetry stuff, it is by no means um, you folks sitting up here listening to Scott read poetry because I think you probably head to the door in a couple of minutes. So please feel free to engage, feel free to ask a question along the way, feel free, um, whatever it is that might come along in your, in your mind to, to share along the way, because I honestly believe that even though poetry is just a, um, a literary form of our imagination, it's a call and response. It's, it's almost like we walk into the room, each one of us, and uh, we can all walk into the, into the same room, but we all see something differently. So my poetry is actually just coming through my lens, but um, it's a reflection on what everybody actually, uh, actually sees. And I'm, and I'm so thankful to coming back, coming back into the ethical society, because they invited me in to participate in their open mics. And if you haven't been, or if you maybe you have been, it's really cool. You know, <laughs> it, it, it inspires you. I don't sing or play instruments or anything else. But I tell you, after sitting in the open mic with them for a little while, it made me want to go home and pick up a guitar and come back. But I'll leave, I'll leave that to, to, to other folks. Um, so the first question that I always, uh, well, excuse me, the first question that I've been asked over the past several months is um, Poet Laureate of Teaneck and uh, why and how did that happen? So I'll, um, I'll, I'll share as much as I can because I still haven't come up with a canned answer to the question um, because it's something that kind of organically happened, you know, something that I thought about and saying, how could I do this? And then all of a sudden the timing was right and it, um, and it, and it happened. So when the story of history, of Teenex history gets written, um, it's going to be a lot more dramatic than that. It's going to be, uh, you know, we were in this uh, council meeting and the meeting uh, ran until midnight and uh, all of these other things that'll probably probably uh, go along with it. Um, but I will tell you, I'll tell you this, that um, as of um, June 27, 2023, um, TNEC did make a, uh, a, a historical um, step, and that was to pass a resolution, unanimously passing a resolution within the township and creating the position as the first po as a position as poet laureate for the township of Teaneck. And uh, subsequently, um, I was asked to, uh, you know, to fill that position. And with that, uh, I only hope to serve as an ambassador, uh, a literary ambassador in the, com in the community. And 
I will not be the only voice. I hope to just provide a venue for other people to also uh, share their voice, whether it's through poetry or any other literary uh, literary form. Um, I wrote a couple little notes that I'll uh, that I'll read before I get into into uh, my particular poetry. And just a fun fact, also at one point um, within TNEC. Eight of the public schools were named after poets or authors. And uh, sublimity, that was probably in the back of my mind when I said, hey, we got to have a poet laureate in here. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a good, good thing to listen to or to remember. Now, on that, on that June evening, I was hoping to engage the public and engage the, uh, the council. And I did read a poem into the record, and I'll share that poem with you. Um, and I say that to say is that someone said in order to get something that you never had, you have to be willing to do something that you have never done. So the poet, the poem was called Listen to a Poet. When you want to see through the wall that is right in front of you, listen to a poet. When you want to touch what's deep inside your heart, listen to a poet. When you want to clearly hear those sounds in the distance, listen to a poet. When you're reaching for the sky and suddenly discovering your own path, I implore you to just listen to a poet. Thank you. And for the record, that's the poem that I shared with the town council and to the community at large. Um, so hopefully they do listen to a poet. I'll give you a little background on, on me. This is called I Am. Um, and like uh, it was mentioned, I am originally uh, from the Bronx. I spent time out in the Midwest. I eventually ended up in, in Teaneck. Um, but this is called I Am. I am high top pro kids and bell bottom dungarees. I am Bruce Lee, the Jeffersons, good times and Cooley High. I am you, Brenna and Charlton Heston. I am the King and I, Westworld and Soylent Green. I am encyclopedias, Langston Hughes and West Side Story. I am doo-wop because there was no hip hop. I am telephone booths on every corner. I am a Bronx tale, platoon, and the education of Sonny Carson. I am rooftops, elevator shafts, and back staircases. I am buses and trains all day. I am father, brother, uncle, cousin, but no longer a son. I am the seventh child of eight. I am the manifestation of a dream. I am Scott Pleasance, and it is so good to be here with you this morning. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll revise that way. Okay. 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 All right. So when, when you're, when you're, when you're uh, writing and sharing your words, you are often, you're trying to uh, give people, uh, especially in a forum like this, a snapshot of um, who you are. And um, those are just some of the elements along the way that I thought would be, uh, would be good to share. And as we, we talk about our words, um, one of the things as, as poets or writers in general, um, you always kind of wonder where your words may go, what they may do. And uh, sometimes you can journal and write them and lock it away and nobody ever sees it. And, and that's, that's fine if that's what you choose to do. 
And then sometimes you're expressing yourself through words. So this particular piece is called My Words. I always wondered what my words would do. Would they be used to make you smile, heard and turned into a feel good moment? Would they be offered to make you think, arranged in very deep thoughts? Or would they be used to make you cry, spit and spat as an insult or recite it to humiliate? I always wondered what my words would do. Well, today, my words will be used, used to tie a ribbon around this poem. As I comb words into gentle metaphors that are brushed through simple sayings that hopefully will flow down the center of your chest at best. Today, my words will be used to unbutton your mind and unzip your conscious, just as I place another poem on your shoulders to bear. I will ask you to turn, turn around, so my words and our thoughts can collide or seemingly just missed head turned that kiss. Like the sun avoiding the moon, like the dark disappearing on light, like the morning after the evening that pretends that yesterday never happened, yet yearning to greet each other for the very first time again. I always wondered what my words would do. Although my words, although our words, we have met many times on that path that runs through this script, the opening monologue, the first scene, the second scene, and side by side in the aisle at that intermission of our dreams, a chronicle that carves our visions and seemingly is broken open to reveal our truth. I always wonder what my words would do. Thank you. Okay, folks, are you getting a sense of my poetry? Okay, okay, good, good, very good, very good. All right. Now, um, before I move on to the, uh, to the next poem, there's something universal that we share. And um, a lot of times our poetry, our writings, the things that we do are prompted by uh, something that happens, good, bad, and different, but it touches us, it affects us. And um, when I write and I share, um, by all means, I'll stand here as the vessel for the message, but a lot of times, um, although the words may come through me, they're not necessarily my exact, they're my experiences, but they might not be mine. Does that make sense? Yeah? No? Sure it does. Oh, okay. I thought you said, no! It doesn't to you. Okay, so what I, what I would say is you and I could have a conversation on the corner and you can share something that is important to you. Now, I say that to say that I didn't actually go through, but being that you shared it with me, now it, it, I kind of embody it a little bit. And then I say, wow, um, it's almost like that, you know, they talk about degrees of separation and how we're really not that far apart. Um, uh, when, I, when I think about it, I might go back and say, man, this guy said something that really resonated with me and I could relate and I'll write a poem about you. You know, so <laughs> so so that's what I say in a in a sense of um, the words are always not you know literal. Okay, very good, very good. So, uh, when is Mother's Day? What month? In May. In May. Okay, so as Mother's Day comes around, we all have a certain feeling that, that arises, whether um, we're able to go and say, you know, happy Mother's Day to our moms, or it's a thought that we carry, or we see it vicariously 
maybe through our children because we're a little bit older, um, but somewhere along the line, uh, it, it may touch you. And this piece is called For the Lady of the House. Every year about this time, I order a large bouquet of flowers. I send them to the same place, the same address, and attach a simple note that requests that they are left for the lady of the house. The flowers are very particular and contain six amaryllis that are symbolic of beauty that is beyond measure. Six asters, that symbol, three that symbolize patience, and three more that symbolize elegance. There are six purple irises that represents wisdom and an offering of pure compliments. Now the 18 arranged flowers are held together by one, one long stem pink rose and one long stem red rose that unequivocally are whispering gratitude appreciation, and how much a love can mean. Did I mention that these are also handpicked from my personal garden? A garden that is cultivated in my mind's backyard, that is planted just beneath my feelings and just above my thoughts, that sometimes lays on the surface of my sentiments. Now, I never see the expressions when the flowers are received, and I question if they bring about a feeling of joy or sympathy. But my hope is that they do bring about a thought of appreciation, a thought that speaks through my heart's eye and shares the story of a son who dearly misses his mother. It's been about 20 years now. But the feelings remain clear and real. The beauty, the elegance, wisdom, gratitude, and appreciation has yet to waver. So I'll continue to send those flowers about this time, every year, to the same place, the same address, with a simple note that says, for the lady of the house. Thank you. You say that? Say, say, say that out loud again. I need that. Come on. There you go. 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 I, I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, but I'm not going to get away with all the, I'm, I'm not going to uh, linger. Or I'm gonna, I'll come back, but I'm going to move a little bit away from the fluffy stuff um, because Elaine told me that this is a house of advocacy and certain things are uh, Certain things make a difference and matter in our world. Is that right? That's right? That's right? Okay, good, good, good. So um, when our children were, were small, like most of us, uh, you know, we, we find places to go and, uh, and you know, expose them to, to things. And um, we had family down in uh, Northern Virginia, and we would you know, take it in the car, take a ride, and, uh, and, and on our ride up or down, either way, we would often stop in Washington, D.C. And uh, this was, uh, boy, how could I explain it? I thought it was always like really cool, you know? Um, everything seemed larger than life, um, the history of our country, um, as it was mentioned, I'm an Air Force veteran, and um, my experiences in the service were good, I guess. The world was not in turmoil at the time. For some reason, I was placed in a small pocket of time where uh, everything was kind of okay, you know, yeah. And yesterday, we were at an event, and uh, 
we heard stories about Vietnam and uh, and then if you fast forward other events that are going on in the world. But for some reason, my experience, um, and this was in the early 80s, was um, a quiet time. And I guess that's just the way, you know, that was the hand that I was dealt. That's just the way it was meant to be. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm saying that to preface um, going through Washington, D.C. That's what I was really getting at. And, and how it was a time when you can just kind of walk through there and there was a sense of patriotism and you felt kind of good and you can go visit the monuments and so on and so forth. Um, and then we fast forward to kind of where we are today. This poem is called, Does It Make a Sound? If my poetry drops in a forest, there you go. And nobody's around. Does it make a sound? So the other day, I took a trip down to Washington, D.C. And when I say I, don't get confused because it's never really I, you see. The I actually comes after the W, which is followed by the F, which undoubtedly has an E, you see. What I'm really saying is my wife and I took a trip to DC. So let me continue. As I approached the steps of the Capitol, which, is, which if you don't know, you can no longer get very close to the building. Need I say more? Now I thought, if I dropped a poem in front of the Capitol and nobody's around, will it make a sound? So I reached into my pocket and I pulled out my poem, which was written on my phone. I thought, this would be fun, or should I just forget it and run? All the while knowing it could be interpreted by some as a gun. Yes, the poem, the phone, the fun, a gun, run. You see, that's just how it is where I'm from. Nevertheless, Raising my voice to the top of my lungs, barely lifting my head, allowing my eyes to focus on the poem, ignoring the sharpshooters aiming directly at me. The poem read like this, Elaine. America, America, my dear America, look how far we have come. This marvelous land of opportunity that makes the rich richer, the poor poorer, and others always fighting for some. Wrapped in a stained blanket of red, white, and blue that can no longer be cleaned of the atrocities that run deeper than truth. And when the lights were turned on, the volume was loud and the picture clear. America, America, my dear, you sought to stand up and shout. What an optimum time to reintroduce. And once again, I'm reminded when someone said, the chickens came home to roost. So that poem was dropped in the front of the Capitol and no one was around. Just some sharpshooters with their sights dialed onto my torso and possibly onto my crown. I barely heard the shots fired while watching the birds falling from the sky, a fluttering of wings overhead, capturing the lyrical vibrations that are sometimes received inside out. This left me with absolutely no doubt that if no one is around and there is a sound, your words are destined to be found, unequivocally heard in a natural state, or if you prefer to divulge a classical, try dropping a poem in front of the U.S. Capitol. Thank you. So that's just an evolution of how things change and how your perceptions change and adjust. And then we went back afterwards and the fences were gone and you can walk right up. And, you know, that's, I guess that's what we, the times, if you're around long enough, you, you see change. I, is that just change? I guess, you know, sometimes I listen to um, people talk and, and as we get older, um, I, I think back and I think about uh, my parents talking to me 
And then you say, wow, you know, I sound like them. You know, the world is crumbling. Everything is falling apart. How do you do this? And my parents were ones, uh, you know, they, they grew up in the, you know, the uh, everything was, you know, in, in black and white and you kind of halfway believe what you read and, um, and, and your, your thoughts extended as far as the newspaper or the local news provided you. And now we all know that we're in a whole nother world where you can push the button and get as many truths as you want, <laughs> if that's the way you want to you want to say it. So let me get a sip of water. Are we doing okay? We doing okay? We doing okay with time? Keep it going? Yep. Okay. All right. I got a couple more for you. Summertime. And the living is easy. Fish are jumping. And the children are high. <laughs> Your daddy's rich. And your mama's good looking. So hush, little poet. Don't you cry. Tears run down my face like rainwater on a December morning. Just warm enough outside to avoid recognizing the season breathing. It should be snowing right now. Collars turned up cold, but for some reason it's warm on this morning. As a stream of emotions finds its way along the curb, congregating with the drains on the corner of that block. This is where childhoods are resting on pillows lost beneath metal gratings and innocence looks up through the asphalt blankets designed as protection, remembering to tuck in the corners and stay comfortable because the neighborhood says, there is no reason to roll over, wake up and fall onto the truth laid on the rug that was moved from the bedside of our us. Warm weather continues to show the sky skewed as a light blue striped suit that has been overwhelmed by the distrust of the chameleon that we call seasons. As the weatherman says, today's temperature will be 60 degrees in the shade, all the while knowing that it should be cold outside. There is a sliver of sunlight wedging its way through the buildings, reflecting off the tatted fabric shades, casting a light onto the linoleum kitchen floor as small feet would find warmth, it's still cold inside and the temperatures are fist fighting in the hallway on this December morning. I long for the days of yesterday when it was cold when it was supposed to be and warm when it was meant to be and somewhere in between, we told time by the seasons as I watch these tears tear a canal of dissipating memories through this warm December morning. Thank you. And I was just kind of thinking about how much things are changing. Um, had no idea it was gonna be snowing, but it's February, that's good. But how, 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 how things uh, have changed so much over the years. And, um, and we, we uh, what do, what do we what do we do what's going on what's happening and it it is what it is you know and i often remember uh you know as a as a child we had four how many seasons do we have now we had four right? it was it was it was it was summer spring winter and fall 
you know, now you never really know, you know, what it's going to be. And, um, uh, you know, if you say we're going to move down to Florida, my friends say, don't come to Florida because it's 150 degrees in the summertime, you know, and um, staying up here where we kind of, you know, had the complete cycles, you just really don't know. And I think it's no more than just a uh, changing of the times. Um, I'll read another one too about, uh, as I mentioned before, about being a um, a military uh, veteran, and this is called um, my blue uniform. I had a blue uniform in my basement with white stripes and a star along the sleeve, colorful ribbons on the chest and metal buttons in between. I kept it in a clear plastic bag that preserved it like new, a clear plastic bag that held my memories in transparent view. It was always a surreal sight to take a moment and look at my past, carrying my uniform with me for over 30 years Oh, how the time moves so fast. One day recently, I went downstairs to take another look. And when I opened the closet door, my uniform was gone. No hanger, no hook. Now I searched my house high and low, but my uniform was nowhere to be found. I even made a few calls through the neighborhood, just, you know, checking around. That night, as I restlessly closed my eyes, reflected on my day and our present turbulent times, I couldn't help but wonder if my uniform had gotten wind of the chaos in this world. I wondered if it still felt like a symbol of patriotism after all that we had achieved, or did my blue uniform simply need a moment of reflection some time to reason, and Jess decided to leave. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a couple more. Um, and then we'll segue. And um, any any folks hang out in the li I, I know library, right? Any any other folks hang out in the library? We all live well, library folks still. Okay, okay, okay. That's another generational thing because if you ask the, uh, the the kids, they say like, "What am I gonna go to the library for? I could just click online and da 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 da." You know, um, but I guess there's something about um, uh, you know, books and touching and. Feeling, I guess it's the sense, the sensation, right? Alice, it all kind of flows through you, right? Okay. Um, so this piece is called "Screaming in the Library." From the top of my lungs until there is pain in the middle. Well, I can read and rattle and rhyme that is wrapped in your thoughts with my emotions on the inside, untouched, unseen, unprotected by what's to come. And I can write a rhythm, a rhyme two times that is indented or indentured, depending on your view of penmanship from the front of the class and somehow still breeze through the pages of our grammar school tools. And I can feel it three times gradually being sharpened like walking through the aisles in the library and searching the shelves and finally finding it on the top shelf in the middle of your dusty palm, allowing the words to crawl through your wrists while carrying tales that are tapping you on the shoulder, then giving consent to your ears to hear a story that yearns for a connection, in turn, a conversation. Are you still with me? So now, I let out a scream at the top of my lungs in the middle of the library and for all the world to hear because I want you to know that there is a 
pain of disdain that speaks like the invisible man as I hear the sounds of the typewriter crying through the realms of through the reams of paper bleeding beneath the pressures that begins to release another story, our story, that for many reasons are always grasping for air on that library shelf within my dusty palm. Thank you. And I thought about that and I was saying how, um, how are you able to, um, how are you able to, uh, to, to get the next generation to understand that feeling, you know, um, and how do you connect? Um, and libraries are essential uh, to that in any fashion or form, however it is that you wanna, you wanna say it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna close, I'll close with this one. And um, this one is a little, uh, a little close to, close to home. And it's called The Ribbon on Route 4. Have you seen The Ribbon on Route 4? Have you stayed to the left but not too far from the right, just away from the center, on the lower level traveling west, looking up at the sign green and white? They say the ribbon is layered just beneath the underpass, rising when it rains. They say it's draped just above the overpass, above the trees settling down on clear and sunny days. They say it's visible as a complex knot holding tightly that easily comes loose with a gentle breeze. A colorful pattern laced in a fabric that's intertwined with memories, stories, and parables that tends to put your mind at ease. They say you can see the ribbon only when your heart desires of seeking more. They say that you can see the ribbon only when you place your hand in the direction of your soul. They say that you'll always remember traveling down this route. I heard there's a sense of serenity, a sense of gratitude, a feeling that you're never alone. They say you'll always appreciate seeing this ribbon because it's on route four, the route that carries you home. Thank you very much. You good? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm on, right? You're on? Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, would you like me to stay uh, or sit? However, I, I want to invite people now to, if you have a question for Scott or a response to your sense of him from the beautiful poems that he shared with us, uh, we would like to share in that way now. Uh, you can sit down to answer people or get up and bounce around. No, hey, whatever, whatever, whatever works. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, so David. David. Mm -hmm. Launch us. The, the, and we'll do two in the room, two from Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Let me grab my let me grab my water bottle here. That was really terrific, yes. son. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So You're welcome. I have a question I'm wondering about. So where, mm -hmm. where does hip hop mm -hmm. fit in the world of poetry, if if it fits in the world of poetry? No, it's a it's a great question. Now, um I I'll 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 answer that kind of in a roundabout way because um although I might uh, look and exude like I'm um, 20 years old. Thank you, David. Um, <laughs> 25. I'll take 25. Yes, yes, I, yes, I will. Um, I, I, I grew up um, on the cusp when there was no hip hop. You know, so um, it, 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 you know, you talk to people now. It just didn't exist. You know, and and I'm 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 sure you know folks can relate and stuff, but it was it's you know, um, so give me five years later, and it would I would have been fully immersed in everything else. But I say that to say that I am originally from the Bronx, so I did see, mm -hmm, so I did see everything from its its, its inception. Um, it is a a a, a part of um, 
I don't, you know, I don't want to say it shaped it and molded me, but it is something that is a part of me. And um, it's poetry. That's all it is in another form. If you go back and if you look at some of the um, the older older artists, uh, older artists, almost like a Gil Scott Heron in the 1970s and the protests, um, poetry and all that stuff. Um, uh, it's just an evolution of it. And then you, 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 you see it today. So take away the music, maybe give it a different cadence and it's all poetry to me. Answer your question. Yes. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Question. Adam. First to comment. I always find your poems so wonderful. They speak to the heart. There's so much insight and there's so many special phrases that are just you just want to hold on to them thank you thank you so much thank you um my daughter who is now a mother-in-law uh when she was seven or eight teaneck had a poetry contest and you had to submit poems but they were like blind in terms of because it was a context and it was a contest and it was going to be published um you had to not put your name and age with the poem <laughs> so that they could be judged impartially and hers was one of the poems that was chosen so it's very memorable and it would be wonderful for Teaneck to have another poetry contest and great great people from the town. <laughs> great great that's a great idea thank you uh, do we have any comments or questions from our Zoom participants? We do not have anyone raising their hand at this time. You're a loss. You see? <laughs> we got like uh, 10 people. You should have 10 hands up there. <laughs> well, okay. I have to say, Mr. Pleasance, that I really enjoy your the the pictures that you bring up in my head um very you have a very clear way of speaking and i very much appreciate that well thank you so much thank you that's something i'm i'm, I'm part of a uh, a poetry that meets on fridays and um if i would like to acknowledge alice if she would just wave her hand there you go we can we can give it up for alice we we meet right there on zoom Okay. Yeah, and Bravo. it's and it's really cool, and it's so many takeaways um, uh, from the class, and um, and Zev is also uh, a part of that class, and um, there's so many takeaways. But to to kind of um, just go a little bit further, what Susan had just mentioned, uh, one of the takeaways are the visuals, and it's mentioned over and over and over again how good poetry creates a visual mm -hmm. and you can almost kind of you know feel it see it as you're you're, you're moving through it mm -hmm. I, I feel sometimes there's a different there are poems that are meant to be seen on a page of white paper yeah. the black type mm -hmm. they play games with how they're laid out mm -hmm. or very yeah. intricate wordplay but really poetry is spoken out loud in front of other people yeah. i mean that's like a little subset almost. yeah no no that's it's, it's an excellent point and I raise it whatever with in whatever forum that I'm at. Um, do you write to write, or do you write for it to be read? Experienced. Yeah, you know, this is kind of your choice, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. More questions? Mm -hmm. Jim. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. I'm kind of struggling with my memory to mm -hmm. figure out or to remember. Who, who it was in response to the question of what a poem means that a poem should not mean but be. Mm. Oh, Archibald McLeish, thank you. Thank you, yes. A anyway, um, here I am listening to your poetry and I'm thinking that what distinguishes it in my mind from a lot of other poetry is that yours seems to be poetry with a purpose mm. and I thank you for that well thank you appreciate it thank you so Eight. much more people in the room here we go 
Um, I just wanted to say that I really love the poetry you read, and, and I read so much poetry these days that is so opaque and um, so self-referential and difficult to really identify with. And your poetry is accessible. And, and even though it's personal, you talk about what you know and your life and your experiences. And, and, but, but it really touches, because it's understandable, it's accessible, that it really touches me deeply. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you. And and I'll 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 say give you a quick response into that too. Um, is that that is the hope, you know? And like I mentioned to David earlier about saying that the experiences, although I'm the vessel that it comes through, it might not necessarily be exactly what my experience is. And I just hope that when I'm sharing, it resonates. And, I'm, and thank you for those words. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I had a quick question to say, how old were you when you really engaged with poetry and mm -hmm. began to think, hmm, I, I got to keep doing this? Well, I, could, I, could, I, I share the story of um, Robert Louis Stevenson, My Shadow, ele elementary school. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, probably because I grew up in a house, I, I was the next to youngest of eight. So when you do things, um, they never let you forget. And that, that probably would have been so far in the back of my mind, but I grew up, um, I have a little shadow, I have a little shadow, I have a little shadow, and it just stayed with me my entire life. So when I go back, I say somewhere in, if I ask my sisters, they could probably tell me exactly what grade, but um, somewhere along the line in elementary school, it kind of, you know, uh, got me. Yeah. And then from, you know, from there, life takes you where it takes you. And, and, um, uh, here I stand. Hello. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Robert Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. One more question on Zoom. Uh, Alice. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Alice. I, I want to say how thrilled I am to come and hear you here. And so, also, uh, how many of you who are in this room, and I'm sure there are a number of you, uh, lived in Teaneck in 1982? So Zeb and I were the editors of a Teaneck poetry anthology that came out once. Uh, that must have been what your daughter contributed to. I'm Alice Twombly. I taught at Teaneck High School for 4,000 years. Um, <laughs> and uh, so the, the Teaneck Anthology must be somewhere uh, in the Teaneck Library. And Ted Dashman, who some of you may remember, was the person who organized that uh, anthology that called on people from all levels of Teaneck. Uh, anybody can contribute, and they have elementary kids up to senior citizens. And Zeb and I and Ted and John Cowan, who some of you may remember as well, we judged all the poems that we got. We got a fair number, right, Zeb? Mm -hmm. How many that we went through? And so I always wondered, and I was thinking actually about this today, Scott, mm -hmm. um, whether or not one of your responsibilities as the emissary of poetry mm -hmm. in Teaneck was also as a cultural emissary, mm -hmm. that your job is just not poet laureate, but connecting the arts together uh, in some way. And maybe you, your group and pe people might think again about creating a poetry anthology for Teaneck. Uh, no, that's a great, that's, that's, that's uh, um, a great, uh, great information, Alice. And what I what I did uh, a few months ago is um, I I created a platform called um, the Teaneck Poetry Park, right? Mm. And within that platform, there's going to be a literary format, hopefully some type of in person format. It's going to go wherever it's going to go. So sometime, hopefully next week or the week after, at the latest. Um, I had put a call out to the community and I got some poems back and we put together a, a small uh, magazine to start with. And um, that will start circulating, um, like I said, within another week or two at the latest. And um, 
we will see where it goes, you know, and right now I'm open. I'm really, really open to suggestions, information, how we can do stuff. Um, and, uh, and that's a, you know, a great idea. So hopefully we are able to, um, connect everything and, and move forward. Yes. Print or online? I'm glad you asked that because let me see if I. No, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to give. It's going to take one one second, one second, one second while we're, while we're all here. Let me just see if I if I got it or if I don't, but I might, and I do. Somewhere ah, there it goes. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. So sneak peek, you're the first. Okay. You're you're the, you're the first. You can't have it. But I, but I, but I will share. Okay, so this is going to be the first edition of the Teaneck Poetry Park, and um, we got about you know twenty thirty pieces in here. From um, you're in there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What's your name? Oh, Dan. Yeah, okay. You are in here. I can't show you the inside, but you're there and stuff. Yeah, and and Zev is in there too. I know Zev. Um, but this is going to be the first edition. And like I said, um, to answer Alice earlier, the platform is the Teaneck Poetry Park. And now what is that going to be? Everybody, oh, is it gonna be like a real park? Is it gonna be this? Is it gonna be that? Hey, it's gonna be whatever organically happens with it. And I and I and I I hope that it it um evolves into other things. But um uh ethical society, you're the first. You're the first. Okay. Where, where will you okay. 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 take your yeah. So so um the plan right now is everything is um is being uh worked through the township, which makes things not as easy as you might want them to be. So um I hope to have some copies available in the library. Uh, the manager mentioned too that they'll probably put some copies in some other areas. Um, but on the back of the magazine, there's a QR code. And if you if you uh, you don't have to scan it like they say, all you gotta do is put your phone up to it and it'll open up the book electronically. Hmm. Right. And that's all you need to do. You know, and that's um, like I said, that that'll make it accessible. Both ways. All right. Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. All right. I, I didn't see any queries from Zoom. Okay. So no more hands. Any no. anybody else? Charlie, yes. Charlie, Charlie here is next and then Wes. Okay. I don't really like I don't really like uh, things uh, over Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything in person? I'm here right now with you, Charlie. Oh, Come on, man. For me. Myself, but to get back on the Zoom, but uh, I prefer things in person. No, that's a great question, Charlie, and 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 absolutely, like I like I said before, hopefully this this platform can go to that. Hopefully, I can I can work with the library and um and we could set something up to do some in person uh classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, 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 great. I, I loved your uh, recitation at the MLK celebration back in January. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. that was cool. If you guys yes, missed yes. it, it was like hundreds of people yes, there. It was wonderful. It was yes. great. Yeah, I had a good, I had fun. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the other thing I was going to add on to what Alice was talking about, I'm part of the uh, TNAC Community Chorus, and a number of years ago, we had a, a concert that was based on poetry that was turned into music, a choral music. Wow. And we had a poetry contest at the high school, remembering mm -hmm. Alice. Uh, and we, one of the, the, one, the winner of that uh, contest was, uh, I think it was Michael Hodges, his mother currently, My, Miles, Miles. Oh, right. I know Miles. My, Miles yes, went yes, on to bigger yes, and yes, great. Yes, yeah, and, he did like and, all over the world. His poet, it was I Like Jazz was the yeah. piece, and it got converted into a choral piece by Lauren Daniels. I know Lauren was, Daniels. Who yeah. was, you know, a, a teenage mu a music educator, yeah. and uh, it was a wonderful piece. Wow. Know, so. wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing about it, you, you mentioned Miles. 
I'm, I'm riding my bike at Voti Park in the summertime, and I look over. Now, I don't know him. I just know of him. Okay. I look over, and who do I see standing there? And I ride, circle back on my bike. I said, are you Miles Hodge? He says, yes. I said, man, I watch your YouTube videos, and I heard <laughs> I heard you was like a T-neck poetry legend, you know. Um, but 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 yeah, he 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 um, he went on and 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 did some fantastic stuff. Actually, he told me that he's doing something behind the scenes, some production stuff um, in the city, and um, uh, and he was there with his uh, with his parents and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah it's funny great. you mentioned that. Yeah, so hopefully, like I said, as I'm out moving around. If something comes, you know, uh, within the circle that you're in, you know, reach out yes. and, and then hopefully we can make something happen. A little something, something. A little something, something. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Showing us yes, yourself. To learn more about us, visit our website, ethicalfocus.org or email us at admin at ethicalfocus.org and we'll get back to you. To make a donation, go to ethicalfocus.org slash donate. Please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can watch many of our past programs on our YouTube channel.